Hi, and today I'd like to talk about corruption in politics, really, but through the story in the UK this week of uh, with the budget, there was, and it was announced a little while ago, supposed to be a reduction in the stakes that you could place on fixed odds betting machines, which at the moment is £100. So problem gamblers, people with uh, serious addictions could end up, not only could, would end up spending far more than they can afford. It's supposed to be being reduced from £100 down to £2. And, well, the timing of the, it's still going to happen, but the timing over it is a, a matter of some consternation. Labour, for example, asked the Conservative government when this was supposed to be happening and the government was saying, well, it, it's intended to happen in April 2020. They announced in the budget this week that it would be um, next October, October 2019. So you think, well, that's a bit earlier. But Tracy Crouch, who is the government sports minister, in other words, it's her department that would have uh, presented this legislation to Parliament. She has resigned saying that it should have been enacted as of next year, April 2019. So that basically puts a bit of a lie to the government's position on this. Now, there are a number of things that, in her resignation letter. She's Well, what she's basically done is she has said that the reason for this is successful lobbying on the part of interested MPs. Now, first of all, I have to say, before I get on to that, uh, it's quite a remarkable situation we're in. A government minister has resigned on a point of principle, which almost never happens, and especially a point of principle that is related to their department. Now, given the nature of ministerial appointments, this is spectacular, because although every now and then you get an MP who is made a minister of a department for which they have a lot of knowledge and care very much about. For example, you, you occasionally get a former educator made minister for the Department for Education. Occasionally, you might get someone who's worked as a health professional becoming minister for health, that sort of thing. But it's very rare. Usually, these ministerial appointments, all the ministries are on a hierarchy, a pyramid, and uh, it, which one you get is basically an estimation on the part of the Prime Minister of where you are in his or her, her in this case, pecking order. So to actually be assigned a position where you've got a real, feel, you know, a, a real motivation to do well for that department, other than your own career progression, is remarkable. And that's exactly what's happened here. So what I say to that is, uh, is wow, you know, um, that's, that's uh, very unusual in politics. But anyway, so who are some of these people that she thinks have changed the Chancellor's mind or ultimately you would argue the Prime Minister's mind and, and delayed it by this amount? Well, there has been so, there have been some details emerging. In particular, and this is something I don't think should happen. So there are a number of MPs, 13 MPs in total, there's about 600 MPs altogether, about 13 MPs have received free gifts paid for by gambling companies tickets to events, that sort of thing. Now, for a start, I don't think that should be right. I mean, we, we now have a system where, this didn't used to exist when I was very young, but we now have a system where MPs have to declare all gifts they receive. So, you know, so one MP, when this was introduced, I remember taking the piss and went on a tour around a biscuit faction and were given a biscuit at the end, and, which, and they said to the journalist, of course I'm going to register this, you know, as I've been given a free gift, You're taking the piss. The, the reason why these rules were created in the first place is so that we could see where there'd be conflicts of interest. But the problem is it hasn't stopped the conflicts of interest. MPs now just declare, um, you know, these gifts and it's all fine because they've declared it. No, it's not. So, for example, particular MP here, Philip Davis, who is the chair of a, of a committee on gambling uh, in the UK. He has been gifted since last year's general election. Uh, so about a year, £5,759 worth of free tickets, or about a year and a half, I would say, uh, to events. Um, and he's also someone who has spoken out against the government res putting restrictions on the gambling industry. Now, I don't care how you slice that up, that's corruption. He has been paid to act in the interests of those industries. There is no other leaning to that. You can't speak out for something um, in government that, that is going to shape the laws of the land 
and take money from the people it benefits. That's just wrong. We pay MPs to represent our best interests. MPs who are not accepting uh, this are, you know, accept the idea that these stakes should be reduced. It's in the best interest of the general population. But for a few individuals that has taken this, uh, these free gifts, these freebies, they are subverting that. And this is what the minister herself is saying. This isn't a case of a backbench MP who's resigned on a matter of principle and not, nothing to resign from, actually. I should say a minister for another area, I guess. Or but someone who's like spoken out against something on a matter of principle, who may have taken an implication over when something was going to be enacted and didn't know the full story. This is the minister for sports. It's her department that's, that's doing this. She would have known. If she says that the plan was to enact it, next April. The plan was to enact it next April and other MPs have then persuaded the Chancellor and the, the Prime Minister to delay it and then maybe they'll plan to delay it again, who knows. And as she said herself that the problem with this is, you know, this from the industry's point of view might be thinking, well we can make, you know, even if we only delay it by, you know, six months, we can make a load of extra money in that time. But her argument is, what you can actually do is to drive extra people into massive amounts of debts, crippling amounts of debts, to the point where there's no way out and they end up, as a result, well, taking their own life. That's ultimately what happens when you put someone in an impossible situation. And crippling debt does that. It's one of the, the our modern day scourges. And... You know, you can argue, well, people are choosing to spend this money when you've got an addiction. You've lost control altogether. There is no choice in the matter at all. Um, and and you, we, have, we already have laws in this country now where if someone, someone could actually say to a, a, a company, a gambling company, a, a bookies, basically, bookmakers, and say, do not let me place any bets. And, um, and, and they, they have to do that. Um, and that's the law. We've actually found, actually, in the last year, it's been reported that there have been cases where people have been able to make accounts, new accounts, but still with their name and everything, all their personal details. And those those bookmaking websites have allowed them to do that. Um, even though that's illegal as well. Um, and and it's you know it's a terrible situation. What this woman is is concerned about is that as a result of this delay. More people are going to die. We're not just talking about getting to more debt. Actually die, potentially. We don't know for certain, but potentially. And, you know, and, and the government should never, ever allow the, the MPs to be in a situation where you can ever have that conflict of interest. Because that person, that MP, is being paid for, for their lobbying. And if they are of the genuine view that these restrictions are not needed and shouldn't be put in place. Why is the uh, why are they accepting these free tickets? Why don't they pay for themselves? If they're interested in sporting events, go to the sporting events, pay for yourself. We, the UK population, pay your salaries and we pay you enough money for you to be able to go to the odd sporting event. If you're going to a sporting event where other members of the population can go and pay their hard-earned money for it, you can pay your money for it as well. Uh, it's as simple as that. There was another MP who's also on, on this list of 13 MPs who have accepted uh, these donations, gone, well, you know, there's like a racetrack in my constituency. It'd be strange if I didn't go to these events. Sure, it would be strange. Yes, of course, as an MP for an area, you should be attending events, things like this. But it shouldn't be paid for by gambling companies, bookmakers, when you are representing their position in Parliament. You should never, ever, ever represent any company or any organization's position in parliament you should only represent what you think is in the best interest of the people now sometimes one of those can be one and the same of course if in your constituency you know for example in my the constituency that i live um it's a steel town so if an mp stands up there and lobbies for the, the continued production of this steel company then they are acting in the interests of their their constituency because people work there that's that's one thing but i do not expect that mp to be accepting gifts from that steel company they shouldn't do that there's no need to do that if you should only want to represent them in parliament 
if you feel it's in the best interest of the wider population of the constituency you represent. And that's not really what's happening. Um, there was, I just have to wonder as well, because when you look at it, when you sort of worked out how much it is, so all together across these 13 MPs, and it's not all from one party, by the way, that's why I've not mentioned parties here. It comes to about £23,000. Now you imagine, even by delaying this for six months, how much extra money the gambling industry can make as a result of this delay. And then you weigh that against 23,000. And that's 23,000 pounds spread across, I think it's three different bookmakers. It's not even the same company. This industry that's worth billions. Uh, it's peanuts. So it's not even that they're spending a significant amount of money. It's next to nothing for them. So it doesn't even cost. And, and look at the effect. This 23,000 pounds. As a result of it, they've ended up with a six-month stay of execution on this on this ability. You know, so there's people who can now spend, well, as they can now, a hundred pounds a stake, as opposed to the two pounds a stake it was going to be changed down to. Um, that's going to represent a massive amount of money. Twenty-three thousand pounds to do that. That is less than the average national salary of a person in this country. Oh, it, you then have to wonder how many other industries are paying these peanuts, these small amounts of money, and yet getting massive changes. You know, by targeting MPs who have, you know, a higher than average amount of influence in a particular area that can that can affect you. How easy is it to subvert the government to doing what you want them to do? absolutely appalling i mean there was an example just how bad we are at making sure that everything's above board and there's no conflicts of interest so again you know another <laughs> brexit link aaron banks who provided a lot of the donations for the leave campaign for brexit there's a, a lot of accusations that he was basically funneling a lot of money from russia uh, and of course that would be illegal you're you're not allowed to pump foreign money into a political campaign in this country now, he's refused to answer questions in Parliament, which is absolutely outrageous, by the way. I've said this before about other people as well. It's outrageous that the UK Parliament cannot insist people answer their questions. It should be viewed as basically the highest court in the land. There should be no, oh, no, I'm not going to answer that question about it. You should be compelled to answer questions about it. It's absolutely ridiculous that someone can basically refuse to answer questions to Parliament on a matter such as this. Uh, but he has refused, he's obviously refused to answer questions uh, asked by various newspapers that had a few difficult questions for him. He went today on television to be interviewed by Andrew Marr. Now, for those who don't know who he is, he's a bit of a patsy. He is someone who will ask questions, of course, as, as a journalist is supposed to do. But he doesn't really ask super difficult questions. He's well known for this. And he certainly doesn't insist that you answer them properly. He doesn't call you out if you try and bullshit him. He just lets it go. He just does his thing and then pisses off home. Um, so that's, and and you have to pay attention, you know, for, for people who may not have that same view of Andrew Marr, you have to think about it this way. This man, Andrew Banks, who refused to answer questions of Parliament, who's, okay, he doesn't have to answer questions that various newspapers put to him, but non, nonetheless has done that as well, chose to go and be interviewed by Andrew Marr on the subject. I mean, that's all you need to know about how effective Andrew Marr is as a political journalist. Um, and the thing is, we just don't have systems. We should have institutions in this country that make sure that our political system cannot be corrupted as far as possible. I mean, it's very difficult to stamp out corruption completely, but it should do a lot more. I mean, it would be simple to say, for example, that MPs cannot accept free gifts um, above very nominal amounts. Okay, if you go to a biscuit factory, they give you a biscuit, fair enough. But at the same time, how difficult it would it be for an MP to say, sorry, I can't even accept a biscuit, right? And you might say that sounds silly, but otherwise you have to come up with a value. What is the, because you'd have to come up with a value, you can accept a gift up to a certain amount that couldn't possibly corrupt an MP. Well, for all we know, there's an MP that would sell their soul for a biscuit. So maybe they should just say none at all, just don't accept it. Go for the tour around the biscuit factory, and then just don't buy a biscuit at the end, or don't accept a biscuit at the end of it. You've had a look round. You've seen, you know, what some of your constituents are doing. Great, fantastic. 
if you want to go to a sporting event, pay for the ticket yourself, you tight bastard. All right? Um, yeah. Absolute nonsense. Absolute nonsense. Or, at the very least, if you feel that you should be attending some events in your constituency and it would cost money, such as a sporting event, then I'm pretty sure the country can afford to spot you a few quid to buy the tickets if you think it's a bit unfair. The important thing is that those tickets are not paid for by industries which want you to lobby on their behalf because there you're creating... It's not even a conflict of interest. Conflict of interest is a nice way of saying you're, you are actually representing that industry uh, in a corrupt way. You, you're, you're, he's been bought. You know, the, the, the gambling industry has basically bought um, from Parliament a six-month extension to uh, restrictions coming in for the measly sum of 23 grand. And we should have institutions that, that stamp out this completely, uh, that have the authority, you know, to, to ask questions of people, follow paper trails, follow the money, and, and, and be able to say, no, this isn't right. And we don't. Um, and I suppose, you know, because sometimes we see in the news when we see examples of massive sums of money, which we know is, you know, donations, political donations. Sometimes there are genuine political donations. But when you know a single person is donating a ridiculous amounts of money, um, to, or, or a company more specifically rather than an individual, an individual may be doing it because they genuinely believe that, but a company, um, then something like that shouldn't happen. You know, donations should be completely anonymous for a start. You know, we've got the systems now, we've got the technology for people if they want to make a donation, can make a donation and no one need ever know you've made it. Um, it, it could be as simple as that. I don't know. But at the same time, I certainly would start at the very lowest level by saying that MP should not be a, allowed to accept I would, I would now say any gifts at all. Don't just put systems in place where they have to declare it. Because the bottom line is we're so complacent about it. We don't, we don't make a fuss. And we should. Because it means that our government is not acting in the general interest of the population. It's acting in the interest of people who throw them a few quid. But anyway, those are my thoughts. You let me know in your thoughts down below. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe for further rambling. Until next time, I'll see you later.